Assembly Member Will. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, today I present uh, you AB 624. First, I'd like to thank the, the chair and committee staff for their hard work on this measure. Uh, what AB 624 would do is modernize the appraisal licensing law in the Business and Professions Code by permitting appraisers to apply the most relevant professional standard for their appraisals. We license appraisers in California under congressional mandate established in 1990. The licensing law was imposed in order to protect federally regulated lenders after the savings and loan crisis of the late 80s. Uh, federal law and our law require the use of a certain set of standards known as the Uniform Standards of Profession Appraisal a uh, Practice for their federally regulated loans. But appraisers are often called upon to uh, appraise real property outside of the federal loan context. For example, in our international economy, appraisers are called upon to perform appraisers in conformity with international standards which apply to foreign lenders or an investment group that might ask for an appraisal of a portfolio that has nothing to do with federally regulated loans. This bill merely permits appraisers to use other nationally or internationally recognized appraisal standards if consented to by the client and properly described in the appraisal report. The bill has no effect on the standards imposed by Congress and will allow appraisers to better serve their clients. And I have with, he, uh, with me here today Mike Lowe on behalf of the sponsor, the Appraisal Institute. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and members. Uh, Mike Belaud on behalf of the Appraisal Institute, California Government Relations Committee. Uh, as Mr. Wilk indicated, a little context here. We created appraiser licensing in California in 1990 when Congress mandated it for all 50 states. They mandated it for what are known as federally related transactions. And typically that is loans involving a federally chartered or regulated lender, uh, the secondary mark, uh, market regulated by the federal government, and so on. That is the vast majority of real estate loans in California and the vast majority of residential consumer-oriented loans. We do not regulate appraisals for non-federally related transactions, things like eminent domain or uh, expert witness in court. Uh, there are a series of non-FRTs for which no license is required at all, never has been. Uh, some years ago, the law was changed to require the uniform standards of professional appraisal practice for anything a licensee does, whether federally related or not. And the bill is very, very narrow. All the bill says is, if consented to by, the, if we're talking about only non-federally related transactions, because the FRTs we can make no change on, but these non-federally related transactions, if the client wishes the use of an alternative standard and it's properly disclosed in the appraisal report and working with the committee, a key amendment was made that the alternative standard must be approved by the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers, the state licensing board here in California, then the appraiser can decide which alternative standard to use. It's really an interesting situation. Appraisers are the only licensed professional I know of in California whose standards are specified in the statute. If you look at the Accountancy Act, a CPA isn't told which standards to use. They decide which standards are most relevant to the uh, work that they're doing. So it is philosophically consistent with that, but the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers will approve the standards. Now, one final thing. The opposition will say that we are uh, harming consumers. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Consumers are asking in these non-federally related transactions to use other standards. They will say that we are diluting USPAP, the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. I would uh, remind the committee that the bill says that even where an alternative standard is being used, USPAP standards as to ethics, competency, record keeping, and scope of work are still going to be complied with. So the behavioral type standards that protect consumers, typically competency and ethics, will still be applicable under USPAP. So this is a very, very narrow technical bill. Uh, we would, I have with me uh, Ron Garland, an appraiser here in Northern California, and Scott DiBiasio from the Appraisal Institute to answer any questions if the committee has them. And we would ask for an opportunity to respond after the opposition testifies. Thank you. Um, 
Any additional uh, witnesses in support? Then so. those in opposition, come forward. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. Uh, my name is John Russell. I'm here today on behalf of the American Society of Appraisers and the National Association of Independent Fee Appraisers to express our strong opposition to AB 624. We believe this bill would significantly harm Californians who rely on real estate appraisals and undo a quarter century of well-established appraisal standards for reasons that are lacking merit. <coughs> The main argument being advanced by supporters of this bill is that the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, or USPAP, does not give appraisers enough flexibility to perform appraisals for international clients in conformance with International Valuation Standards, or IVS. This argument is flatly wrong. USPAP affords appraisers latitude to provide a range of valuation services and appraisal types to clients and does so without forcing appraisers to abandon key professional underpinnings, such as ethics, competency, and record keeping. In fact, efforts are underway between the Appraisal Foundation, the entity congressionally authorized to promulgate appraisal standards in the United States, and the International Valuation Standards Council to harmonize USPAP and IVS so that appraisers may more readily perform valuations in conformance with either or both together. In short, this is a solution in search of a problem that we do not have today in the marketplace. The harmonization of USPAP and IVS speaks to the profession's ongoing effort to coalesce its standards and practices. To allow for the introduction of myriad new standards in California would run counter to the direction of professional appraisal practice today and only serve to hinder the users of appraisal services and confuse Californians who rely on these appraisals. What's more, there is no guarantee that lenders and secondary market participants would accept appraisals completed under alternative standards and could, at a minimum, require Californians to obtain multiple appraisals at additional cost and time in order to fulfill lending requirements. There even exists the outside potential for the use of alternative standards to slow or freeze credit liquidity within the state, harming consumers and small businesses who seek to finance the purchase of homes or offices here. This is all without saying that were the law to pass, the already constrained resources of the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers would be taxed even further as they would be required to oversee numerous new standards. Failing the provision of substantial resources to augment its capacity, one can imagine the ability of BREA to provide effective oversight would be crippled in such a diverse environment. One final point we wish to make is to emphasize the manner in which USPAP is updated on a recurring basis. The Appraisal Foundation, which is a neutral, third-party, not-for-profit organization, oversees the USPAP exposure draft process. This process, by which USPAP is updated every two years, is fully open and transparent over several rounds and allows for comments from all appraisers and other stakeholders to the appraisal profession. This emphasis on public participation and constant modernization ensures that the standards of appraisal practice remain current. We cannot say with any degree of certainty whether other valuation standards, if allowed, would be as welcoming to such daylight and scrutiny would be as focused on meeting the existing and emerging needs of all stakeholders, or would be free from self-interest to the detriment of Californians broadly. Again, we thank you for holding this hearing, reiterate our opposition to the bill, and look forward to any questions you may have. Additional others in opposition? Yes. And you just heard a, a litany of issues that uh, many have with the bill. So. Uh, if you wouldn't uh, repeat, and if you have some new information, we'd appreciate that. Okay, I'll, try, I'll do my best. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maggie Hambleton, and I'm the vice chair of the Appraisal Standards Board, who authors the Congressionally Authorized Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, also known as USPAP. I'm also a designated member of the Appraisal Institute and have been for the past 28 years. AB 624 attempts to address a problem that really doesn't exist. Over 90 organizations are affiliated with the Appraisal Foundation, including the National Association of Realtors, the American Bankers Association, and all but one of the National Appraiser Associations. None have expressed support for additional set of appraisal standards. 
In fact, many organizations, including the National Association of Realtors, have provided written support of USPAP as the national valuation standard. The current valuation standards, USPAP, set the minimum threshold for what is needed to produce a credible valuation. If the minimum threshold is too burdensome, why have standards at all? Of all valuation standards, only USPAP has been proven to be enforceable in federal courts, state courts, and administrative law proceedings for the past quarter century without issues. USPAP is not restrictive and, in fact, was developed to allow great flexibility for appraisers to perform all types of appraisal assignments. In fact, the past president of the Association of Appraisal Regulatory Agencies publicly expressed that in all the cases he has heard on, regarding USPAP, it has not been burdensome for the regulatory officials because it is so flexible. USPAP is recognized globally, and um, as uh, John said, the authors have, of USPAP have been working closely with the international uh, valuation standards uh, so that we can harmonize what small differences there are. Unlike the standards offered by a trade association, USPAP is written to ensure public trust and is developed in a very transparent manner. All proposed changes are publicly exposed for comment. Comment letters are posted on our website, and public comment is received through public meetings held around the country. The introduction of additional standards will only further tax the already limited appraisal oversight and enforcement resources of the California Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers. There has been no demonstrated need for additional valuation standards, and if there were, the California Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers would have made a request for others. Uh, with that, thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand in opposition to AB 624. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, there's an opposition. My name is Bradford McLean. I'm a certified general real estate appraiser here in the state of California. I've been an appraiser since 1943, or 1943, 1973. I know I look old with this beard, but I don't look that old. Um, I'm a member of the Appraisal Institute, hold the MAI designation. I'm also a member of the uh, American Society of Appraiser and hold the ASA designation. So I'm in the joyful spot of being a uh, member of one group supporting this and another group opposing this. And I'm also on the board of the Northern California chapter of the Appra uh, American Society of Appraisers. And their vote was to um, uh, oppose this bill. But more important, I'm here as a certified general appraiser. I've been licensed now for 25 years. I'm a, I've started out as a residential appraiser, commercial appraiser. I do both appraisals and appraisal reviews. And I can say that one of the most successful things that has ever happened in our profession is the adoption of USPAP licensing and certification. And one of the most successful things we have here in the state of California is the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers. You can pick up their uh, monthly newsletters, and it, it'll, it'll show you what they do in terms of enforcement and, and looking out for consumers and clients. So we have a system that works. My concern is that if you adopt this bill, that um, a lot of those will fall under the radar. And right now, there's just been a modification to the bill. I understand that. Um, the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers would have to approve any national or international valuation standard, which I think is a good change, but there is no mention of what standard are they going to hold these standards to. So I think you're, there's still a bureaucratic uh, process that needs to be worked out here. The state of Texas adopted somewhat similar legislation, and ultimately I think they, said they ended up concluding that these alternate valuation standards still had to substantially meet the requirements of USPAP. Well, that's just kind of like keeping USPAP in a sense. So um, I don't want to go on too much more, but two points I want to raise that this bill has presented would um, have uh, appraisers working under USPAP, working under uh, lending assignments, FRTs, would m meet the newest requirements of uniform standard of professional appraisal practice. But if you're not doing one of those assignments, you're still required to meet 
the ethics requirements of USPAP, but you're stuck in 2014, 2015. So go forward now to 2024. Sir, 15. could you wrap up? Yeah. Uh, okay. So my concern is we're now going to start having two sets of ethics standards here if you adopt this bill. And again, that just creates more confusion. So um, thank you. Thank you. Next witness in opposition. Mike Evans, um, and I represent RICS and others. I, I'm similar to Brett. I make you nervous, I'm just next in line. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is going to create a litigious situation. It's not in the public interest. All but one organization is opposed to this, for the appraisal organization, save one. Um, nobody knew about this. You know, there, there's going to be something raised where the statement of, well, why didn't you come in at, you know, at, at the representative level? We didn't know about this. We were unaware. We caught blind, or we would have been here, and we apologize for that. But the reality is we didn't know about it. If we'd have known about it, we'd have been there a heck of a lot sooner. So okay, Thank you. Next witness in opposition. Madam Chair, I'm Stan Wig with the California Association of Realtors. We are not in opposition. I wanted to clarify the very nuanced uh, testimony of the, uh, the opponents. Neither the National Association of Realtors nor the State California Association of Realtors is opposed to this bill. We have not taken a position on it. Uh, we did sponsor the original legislation, which said in response to the federal mandate, we said we will only at the state level require the imposition of the standards and the license to federally related transactions. And that's the way we wrote the bill. And that's the bill that was passed about 25 years ago. I'm, I'm uh, happy to say, I guess, that I was the staffer on that bill when we sponsored that legislation. This is not inconsistent with that, but we do not have a position on this bill, and I don't want the committee to be confused. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the committee. Any uh, questions from committee? Yes. Senator Galgiani. This is a little bit off topic, perhaps, but I'm wondering if anybody can answer this question. So prior to the housing crisis, um, there were new developments in my district whereby the development, the developer had an arrangement with a certain bank that agreed to do all of the financing for the homes in that development. And so certainly if the developer says that this house is worth this much money and the bank agrees to finance this much money, my question is, in a situation like that, is it that an appraiser, oftentimes a, an appraiser works for a bank? So are there situations where, is it, a, is it allowable under the law where appraisers work for a certain financing company and the financing company has an arrangement with a development company that is selling homes? Does anybody have the answer to that? So. Um, Senator Galgiani, first of all, those are federally related transactions, so we're making no change in the law, whatever, in that area. USPAP would continue to be the standard. Second of all, the USPAP rules on conflict of interest, contrary to what some of the witnesses said, will continue to apply. So a, a uh, appraiser cannot be financially interested in the outcome of the appraisal pursuant to the ethics rules in USPAP, and those will continue to apply. We were talking about a very small subset of non-federally related transactions where the client has asked for the use of an alternative standard, and that standard has been approved by the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers. So there is, in my opinion, no consumer issue involved here. But, no, that's right. But I didn't see you come in. My no, go ahead. If, you had to, if, well, you if I could just retort briefly on the question of ethics that came up, and by way of illustrative purposes, we've become aware in the case of an alternative valuation standard or appraisal standard, my apologies, in which that standard allows under its ethics rules for the appraiser to take a non-disclosed contingent fee in certain circumstances, meaning that that would not have to be disclosed to the consumer who's ultimately going to be relying on the appraisal. That's one example where there will be divergences between the ethics requirements of an alternative standard and use path, and that's going to create a situation that may be irreconcilable between the two standards as well as create enforcement um, headaches for BREA. And I think that's just one instance in which it's going to, it, you have to step back and look at the broader picture and say, enough of these discrepancies, if they take place, 
will create chaos in the marketplace. People aren't going to understand or necessarily know these nuanced differences if they don't live them every day. All they're going to see is a number on paper. They're not going to understand how the appraiser necessarily got there because they don't live these standards, especially in these alternatives that are being proposed. And we believe that that has the potential to harm Californians who are just going to rely on that number. And if something bad happens down the road, come back and wonder what's gone wrong. Yes, I'm sorry. Did you want to comment, Mike? I would, I would <laughs> I'll reiterate, under the bill, any time an alternative standard is used, with the approval of the Board of, or the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers, USPAP standards on ethics, competency, record keeping, and scope of work will continue to apply. And that is a point that is being um, confused, I think, in the presentation of the committee. Well, and I think, oh, I'd like to ask a question because I course. heard a lot of the testimony. It was uh, stated a couple times that this is a uh, solution in search of a problem. I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond to that because I don't assume you bring a bill forward if you don't think there's something that needs to be amended. So you need to make that case. People come to licensed and certified real estate appraisers and they ask, I need my appraisal done in conformance with another set of standards. Perhaps it's an international standard. Uh, there is something about USPAP that is inflexible, and the lo present law says we are bound by USPAP. So what that potential client is forced to do is go to an unlicensed appraiser here in California who is uh, answerable to nobody and required to use no professional standard at all and that's perfectly okay because we only require a license here in California for a federally related transaction. So someone comes to us and asks us in a non-federally related transaction to use another standard. We can't do it, even if the Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers says those standards are fine. And, and since I missed the... Uh the presentation. You I apologize. You know, I, yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, but it, at least I don't think my colleagues would want to hear it again. But uh, you know, when I first read the bill and looked at the analysis and talked about it, my first thinking was we're getting back into the mortgage problem and we're going to start having appraisals that are going to be questionable. And that was my first first response: is this the fear of that thing? And then as looking now, knowing that the bureau determines whether it's acceptable or not. Uh, and, uh, and the standards that are established there, I felt much more comfortable. And, and now I, I certainly would be happy to support the bill. On that as well. the bill. Very good. Thank you, Senator Bates. We have any other comments and questions? We have a motion from Senator Bates. Okay. And uh, would you like to close? Sure. Again, uh, Thank you. I appreciate all the testimony and, and the input, uh, input from all parties. This is just a simple pro-business measure. Again, 95 plus uh, percent of these loans are federally regulated and will continue to be so. All we're doing is giving additional tools for, frankly, sophisticated, sophisticated investors, you know, investment groups, uh, inter, you know, international players that come in that want to invest in our state. You know, we are the, gate, the gateway to, to the Pacific, and I think we all know how we benefit from that economically. So with that, I just uh, appreciate your consideration and ask for an aye vote. Very good. Thank you. We have a motion from Senator Bates. Do pass to the Appropriations Committee. Please call the roll. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Bates. Aye. Bates, aye. Barry Hill. Block. Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani, no. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Jackson. <clears throat> Mendoza. Malkowski. Aye. Malkowski, aye. Four. Bill has four votes. We'll leave the roll open for the absent members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Special. Chair and members. Moving now to... Mr. Gomez, I don't see it. We have no one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, should we take a vote on anything? We could open the roll on. Um, we could just start at the top and, and work through it, so those who, who missed the item. So let's just open the roll on item number one, AB 159. Please call the absent members. Motion is due pass to appropriations. Current votes 5 0. Bates? Aye. Bates, aye. Barry Hill? Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Wachowski? Aye. Wachowski, aye. Scott, eight. Has it has eight votes. Open? We'll hold the roll open for the absent members there as well. Uh, um, item number two, we have not, uh, we did not have a vote on that. Do we need a motion? 
Motion by Senator Hernandez uh, on <coughs> item number two, AB 178. Motion is due pass to Appropriations Hill. Aye. Hill I. Bates. Aye. Bates I. Berryhill. Block. Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani I. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez I. Jackson. Mendoza. Wachowski. Aye. Wachowski I. May, may I inquire? I apologize. I was presenting, so I didn't hear the discussion. Was there any... Um, discussion or a willingness to do something about that year lapse when there will be no uh, uh, n no standards or no requirements? There was, when I, I was, I believe, as well, so I missed some of that, but my right, understanding so is I'm, there was no I'm, no change to the the agenda, I mean, to the analysis and the recommendation. No. It's, a, it's as, as it's written based on what we learned from the... Uh, the hearings we had, the uh, sunset review hearings earlier, and uh, we I'm going to stay off here. Thanks. <coughs> that bill has five votes. We'll hold the roll open for the absent members there as well. And